like for any process that we need to describe uh, for any material really in the case of soil you know when we want to describe uh, the the flow of water through the soil we need the hydraulic conductivity the K and for that we need to do testing right to determine the K in the case of uh, typical operations in engineering is the Darcy experiment, the typical Darcy, Darcy experiment that is conducted in the lab to determine the hydraulic conductivity. So, of course, for strength, we do strength tests, etc. For consolidation, we have to do the consolidation test, right? And uh, the idea is that we would like to know the parameters, the soil parameters that are going to dictate how quickly and how much the soil will deform due to consolidation. What soil? The soil that is in the field, in our site, that we believe as engineers will undergo considerable deformation due to consolidation. Okay? Now, here in this slide we have uh, a phrase here which says consolidation test is essentially conducted to assess the compressibility characteristics consolidation process, or cons sorry, consolidation characteristics really, the parameters that dictate the consolidation or uh, characteristics of clay. Okay, now clearly all soils can consolidate, right? Because consolidation is by definition, by definition consolidation is a process by which the soil deforms, saturated soil deforms as the water seeps out of the voids and that can occur for any soil but particularly of interest of particular interest to us are the clays because they are the ones that have the lowest hydraulic conductivity okay and therefore it takes a long time for consolidation to occur in addition it is typical that the clays the clay layers that we find in the field are uh, very compressible, meaning that they can deform quite a lot when we load them and of course that is during consolidation, right? and of course we would like to know how much that deformation that we denoted as delta C is going to to be, you know, how big it is, is going to be okay the lab test the lab test that we conduct in the lab, of course, for consolidation is, uh, has uh, various steps to it and we're going to uh, outline them here so that, so that not so much so that you understand exactly how the test is conducted but so that we understand how the specimen of soil in the lab consolidates under the loads that we apply to it okay? and how from that test uh, how, how the parameters that are obtained from that test are used to calculate the consolidation settlement in the field. So I'm going to, to go to the, to the third slide, which looks like this, right? And I'm going to zoom in into the cross-section side view of the consolidometer, which is the, the testing setup not the setup, but not the complete setup. Actually, this is just the portion that contains the specimen for the experiment. So, this right here, this right here, is a a container essentially. Okay, so it's a it's a cylindrical container that holds water. Okay, this is actually from the book, so you can see it there a little better, I guess. Down here, there is a pedestal, okay, a plate. Remember that this is a cross-section of the side view. This plate is generally made of porous material. So that plate down here below the specimen, specimen is of course the, the element of soil that we are testing, that um, plate is made of a material that is called a porous stone. So it, it is like a sponge, Okay, so it's like a sponge, but it's very, very stiff. Okay, so and it's made of, of, of mineral grains actually. So, so you can think of it as a very porous rock, 
okay it's called a porous stone and it's it's cut so that it it looks like a disc in the shape of a disc okay now on top of that is the specimen which is a, a cylindrical uh, specimen of soil that is obtained from the field we'll talk about that later on and that is confined laterally by a ring of steel or brass okay that is the specimen is confined by a steel uh, by a steel ring or a brass ring then on top of that that white cylinder is a what's called a top plate and it's also a porous stone okay generally we have porous stone for stones on the bottom and on the top of the specimen okay and then on the top of that there is a plate that has a specific shape like this that we use to place a rod that that basically loads the specimen okay this gauge here is a gauge that monitors the deformation the vertical deformation of the specimen okay and what else do we have here? Pretty much, yes, that's it. So what we do is we take the specimen, we place it in the ring. There's a specific procedure to place it in there, etc. That you learn in the lab course, okay? Um, that is placed on top of the plate, the porous plate, down here, the porous stone. And then the porous stone above is placed. And then the, the soil is filled with, not the soil, the... Um, the container is filled with water and that water seeps through the porous stones into the soil specimen so the soil specimen before we begin the actual loading of the specimen to determine the consolidation parameters the specimen is saturated okay generally the specimen is almost saturated or even saturated when we place it in the ring okay before we fill this with water that is because that soil is obtained from, from a, a site in the field, okay, from a specific location. And there are, of course, we, we, uh, we try to, to get many, para many specimens from, that is from different depths so that we can determine consolidation parameters versus depth. We'll talk about it later, but what, essentially what happens is we take a specimen from the field that is a saturated specimen and we place it in here. That is typically what happens. Then we, we ensure that it's it is consolidated that it is uh, saturated during the whole test by placing this water uh, bath around it and, and so that the water goes into the pore stones and into the specimen okay now what do we do once the specimen is prepared and the the gauge is placed on top of it? well we load it okay so what we want to do is essentially measure the compressibility parameters of the soil dur during a consolidation condition or a consolidation process so let me use this to talk about how we conduct the test okay the test is that the specimen is is placed in the ring, etc. The, the bath is full of uh, filled with water, so that the specimen is kept saturated, it's, and and then the specimen is ready for testing to begin. So what we do is we do the following. This is time. Okay. this is void ratio okay so the void ratio of the soil is plotted here versus time initially at time equals zero okay the soil has a an initial void ratio e naught okay and that is this, this void ratio of the soil inside this little uh, setup here before we load before we apply any load okay so when the specimen is set, ready to, to uh, receive some loading, we take a weight, okay, in the means of a disc, of like a weight plate, okay, like in the gym, for example. We take this plate and we place it with a, with a cantilever system that I let you uh, uh, 
see in the, in the lab, we, we basically place that load on top of the soil specimen. And what happens is consolidation begins for that load. So the water in the specimen takes the load and as it does that, the water gets pressurized, right? The water takes the load and then the water begins to escape the specimen through the porous stones into the bulk fluid in the container, in the bath, okay? And the specimen consolidates for that load. So essentially what we get is a response that, it, that looks like this. Okay? This response is registered from the loading of the specimen with that first disc, okay? Five kilograms, whatever, okay? Well, let's say five kilograms times G, that would give you the equivalent force in Newtons, okay? Now, that force is, you can convert it to a stress if you divide, of course, by the cross-sectional area of the specimen. So we can call that load that produced this response, we can call that uh, sigma A, okay? Sigma for loading step A. That is the load. That, that force, that is the weight of the disc, okay, times the cross-sectional area of the specimen, pi r squared, that would give us the, sorry, divided by the area, that would give us the stress, right? Force over area. Now, how do we determine the void ratio at the end of that loading stage, loading stage A. Well, we know because we have a gauge associated with the setup, this gauge here, this tells us how much the specimen deforms in time because we can see the gauge moving. The moment it, does, it, finish, it finishes moving, that is the end of consolidation for that load and our new void ratio can be calculated with the new volume of soil. That is a new volume of the specimen, which is now smaller than the initial volume. So this is the void ratio at the end of loading A. Then we place another load on top of the one we have already. So then we get another consolidation response for that additional load. Okay, and that is Um, the step or let's say the, the part B of the test where we loaded with an additional uh, force therefore an additional stress and so once the consolidation is has been finished or one the, once the consolidation uh, process finishes for that load then we register or we can calculate a new void ratio a new void ratio yes and we do this multiple times Okay? We do this multiple times. So, the stress associated with this response is sigma A. The stress associated with this response is sigma A plus sigma B. Even though the stress let me rephrase. The stress associated with this response is sigma A. The stress associated with this response is sigma B, right? But the stress that the soil is feeling, the stress that the soil specimen is feeling at the end of this stage is sigma A plus sigma B. Because at the end of this stage, the specimen has two disks on top of it. One associated with sigma A and one associated with sigma B. The response is due to the additional sigma B the, ad, the one added to sigma A, that response. But at the end of that response, the stress, the vertical stress that the specimen is under is sigma A plus sigma B. Okay? And we can put primes because we know that at the end of consolidation, the load, which is that disk divided by the area, is carried by the particles. At the beginning, it's carried by the water. But as the water escapes and the UE is reduced back to zero, the particles carry all of it, and so we put a prime. 
prime, 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 etc. Okay? Once we have these parameters, then we can reduce them to a plot that looks like this. E sigma prime. And we put this in a log scale. Okay? E naught is known because you know the volume of voids and the volume of solids for the specimen before you load it. Okay? Then we plot sigma A versus EA. Okay? So EA is going to be down here and sigma A prime is some value, not zero, right? Say 100 kPa. Okay, so we have that point. We have now this point. Here we have sigma A plus sigma B, right? So maybe 200. So if this is 100 and sigma B is another 100, then we have 100, 200, etc., right? In the case of 100, uh, if, if, this, if these two are the same size, the distance is the same, then it cannot be 200 because it's a log scale, okay? So maybe this is something like uh, 300, okay? So let's say this is 200, this one, and this is 100. So then this would be 300, right? And this 100. So, uh, KPA. So then we have a point maybe here. EB. Okay? So it's, we plot the state of stress at the end of consolidation, the value of the stress, versus the void ratio at the end of the corresponding stage. Okay? This plot comes from... That plot. Okay, we basically take that this point, take this point, we take this point, etc., and we plot them in this phase, in this space. Okay. Eventually, we're going to get something that looks like this. Okay. We keep on plotting points. Okay. And then this is called the consolidation curve for the soil that we took to the lab and tested. And this curve, which comes from the raw data, let's say, this is the data that we get from for the experiment. We take this data and reduce it. We take specific points and plot them like this, okay? This, from this curve is where we get the consolidation parameters, okay? So it's typically a curve that looks like this. This is log scale, E. It's typically a curve that that has somewhat of a linear portion, then a break, and then another linear portion here. Okay? This is the first portion and the second portion. We'll get to this one in a second.